So when it comes to the commodity space, are you sitting on the sidelines for now in anticipation of a stage four decline? Is there anywhere you're currently seeing opportunity? You know, uranium's obviously been quite a success over the the last year, correcting somewhat at this moment. The long-term fundamentals look rather bullish. Gold and silver, is there anywhere where you could see deploying capital in the commodity space now? And in the case of the stage four decline, where would you be looking specifically for for value? Yeah, so good question. So we recently played the uranium play. We got in, we caught a, caught a move up. We've moved out of that. Um, precious metals, I'm a big fan of holding physical metals long-term, not as a huge trade to try and make a grand slam, but as a, a insurance plan. It's just an asset that I like to keep a percentage of my portfolio or my wealth kind of in physical metals in case currencies collapse or financial systems blow up, whatever. Um but really, I don't see a whole lot of opportunity in the commodity space right now. I, I think they're fairly, fairly valued. But I do think if we go through a stage four decline, um, and this happens all the time, is pretty much everything gets sucked down with it. So we will see the precious metal space. We'll probably see uranium. All of those get beat up really, bit, really badly uh, during that sell-off. And they'll probably be the first ones to bottom and, and rally and recover. And when that next major cycle starts, that's when I'm actually going to be really excited for the value play to get into miners, potentially uranium uh, stocks, because those are the ones that will be probably undervalued from the panic selling and the forced liquidation margin calls that take place. And those are the plays that can rally hundreds, thousands of percent. And they th these super cycles really don't happen that often every 10, 15 years, and they take years to unfold. So they've been unfolding and it's brewing. And I think we're in like that last quarter of the game where we just need this stage four or stage three to end. We need to go into this distribution phase. And, you know, it, unfortunately, it's going to be difficult for a lot of people. They're going to lose half their wealth probably. Um all kinds of financial stress causes all kinds of other issues. So it'll become a very, really crappy environment for most people, unfortunately, but it does give us that reset. And that's the final straw we need before the next major super cycle, uh, not only in, in precious metals and, and in commodities, I've, but I also think we're going to see stocks, you know, have a huge rally after all this is done, but this is going to take probably six, eight, 12 months to unfold still. And any thoughts on the oil and gas space at present and the potential opportunity it might present? Obviously, a very complicated market with such a huge confluence of factors playing a role in the price action. Um, how are you looking at the oil and gas space right now? And, and do you see uh, the opportunity for upside um, in the case of this stage four decline? Yeah. So generally, like this is the monthly chart of natural gas. And just looking at cycle analysis, just cyclical kind of highs and lows, how the market goes through these waves, we we just had one of these big blow off moves. Every every three, four years, we have these major cycles. So natural gas is getting pretty darn cheap. <laughs> uh, I think it, it could continue to stay down here for a little while. I think it's going to start another major cycle to the upside. What I have found is when there's massive panic selling in the stock market and there's a lot of fear in the market, natural gas, for some reason, uh, likes to go up in, in many cases. Uh, so I, I think natural gas, I think most of the downside is out of natural gas. Problem is if you're an equities trader, there isn't a good way to play it. Uh, ETFs around this are just deadly. You don't want to hold them. You really need it to be in an uptrend when it's already moving and, and make your money and get out. Um, so it's tough to play that. I think crude oil has got um, quite a bit of downside potential still. I think we're going to eventually kind of kick into a recession. You've seen overseas, uh, a lot of other countries have already said, hey, we're in a recession. Uh, the US has you know, got different ways of measuring those things and inflation and all that stuff and um, kind of mask it. I, be I believe we're already starting a recession, but I think crude oil will be down in the $40 range, um, you know, potentially six, eight months from now very easily. Um, and a lot of people are like, well, that's way too cheap. It can't get down there. But if we just draw a line across this chart at $40, you can see the $40 mark is really a very significant pivot zone. It has hit this $40 level so many times over the past, you know, uh, 20 years. Uh, you know, it's, it's not cheap for oil. It goes to this price fairly frequently. And we've just had a huge blow off phase to the top. This is typically what we've seen is we see crude oil skyrocket. 
usually just before the stock market goes into a massive recession. And, and then it has a little consolidation. And uh, the monthly chart on, on here actually kind of hides it, but there was a consolidation right through this area. And we've actually had a similar move. We have this consolidation right through this area here, which is pointing to a big breakdown in oil. So I'm pretty bearish on the space. Uh, I think, again, almost everything is going to go down. You need to kind of get out of the commodity space. You need to get out of the equities markets uh, into different assets that will go up during chaos, which bonds could become a very good play. Um, and the U.S. dollar index, uh, the ETF for that could be a very good play. Uh, if we look at the, the U.S. dollar uh, index, uh, it had a huge run in 2022. It was like one of the only assets that really moved up. It is on the super cycle to the upside. It has a very strong bull flag pattern pointing to, you know, a dollar twenty, dollar twenty one, which means commodities are going to get hit because of the rising dollar. Typically, we see the dollar rally when the stock market crashes, when there's chaos in a bear market. We saw that back in two thousand. The dollar had these huge rallies to the upside just before we went into the the stage four decline. Uh, we saw the dollar have massive rally as. We went into 2008 financial crash, and I think we're going to go into another crash and send this back up to a major, major high. And that is going to put a lot of pressure on commodities. But all of this stuff, even though it may sound negative, is 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 great. If you understand what's unfolding, what's moving and where and when, uh, it allows you to take advantage of these. Uh, so I'm very bullish on the dollar. I'm pretty bearish on everything else. With that said, as a shorter term trader and investor, we are long the markets. We're riding these up. Uh, we're not holding any commodities at this point, other than I hold physical metals just long term. Um, and eventually, if when we have the financial reset, I'll be looking to buy into the precious metal space, probably with miners as the leverage play uh, to really you know, amplify, supercharge the returns on that portion of capital that I put to the commodity space. And when it comes to physical precious metals, do you view silver in the same light as gold? Do you view it more as an industrial commodity? And if you hold both, at, at what ratio do you hold each of them in terms of the metal itself? Yeah, um, I probably hold about 60% silver and then 40% uh, gold. I look at silver, I don't really look at it as industrial. I mean, I, I don't even, I mean, I don't really even look at it as a precious metal. I just look at it as the leverage play around gold. Um, it really just is kind of that rocket. It's more of like the small cap stocks to me of like the precious metal space. It's volatile. It moves fast. It underperforms for a while and then will take off like a rocket and, and play catch up and, and go beyond gold. So it's really just the volatile play. It's the aggressive play to take advantage of, um, uh, you know, the, a super cycle, a big move in the market. So you need everything to be aligned once all the markets, when gold is moving up, silver is moving up, miners are, are moving up, they're all in confirmed uptrends. The dollar is starting a downtrend. That will be like the perfect storm. Um, we've probably gone through a, a bear market already, so things have been cleansed. That'll be the perfect storm where silver will definitely be the preferred play. Silver miners will also be you know, the high leverage play on that. So I just look at it as the, the small cap aggressive play that you don't want to touch unless it's in the perfect market environment. And we're not there yet.